this is not this is not gonna be a fun process. I have a lot of white friends. <laughs> Today's video is a doozy, but I also think one of the most important videos that we've ever made. We are digging into implicit bias. Implicit bias? Implicit bias. Implicit bias. Implicit bias is defined as these kinds of unconscious or relatively uncontrolled feelings and thoughts about people from other groups. We're not just doing this in like an abstract way, we're actually gonna dig into our own biases and take a test on our bias and share the results with you. It's kind of terrifying, but it's really important work because as it turns out, the implicit biases that exist in the US today may make up the biggest barriers to racial progress, more so than obvious KKK or alt-right racism. You are watching Out In My Mind. This is our video series where the world's top psychologists give us an experiment to try out in our daily lives that will hopefully make our lives happier, healthier, and more holistic. Our guest is Dr. Calvin Lai. He's one of the world's leading researchers on implicit bias. He's a professor at Washington University in St. Louis, where Brian and I went to school. He's the director of Project Implicit, which is an international consortium of researchers looking into implicit biases. And he's gonna school us on what implicit bias is and how we can address it. Dr. Lai, how are you doing? Dr. Lai. Dr. Lai explained to us that implicit bias shows up in a lot of situations. One of the more famous studies found that job recruiters are more likely to pass on the resume of a white job applicant over a black job applicant, even if the resumes are exactly the same besides the name. Another way that it may show up is... When you have a really bad gut feeling about some stranger that you see, and you might even realize that that bad gut feeling is because they appear to be black, there's a part of you that might want to cross to the other side of the street. There are a lot of other ways that biases show up, but the question you might be wondering is, where do these biases come from? Well, biases are in some ways natural to humanity. We have in-group favoritism. And that's totally fine. But when you scale this up to a countrywide level, it actually becomes a problem. And the main reason for that is that white people hold the power in this country. And one crazy stat that Calvin shared with us is that 75% of white people don't have a single non-white friend. Not a single one. What that means is if most white people don't have a single non-white friend and those that do hold implicit bias against non-white people, we have a situation where white people are helping white people, are helping white people, are helping white people. We've kind of created an invisible barrier that prevents people from other groups from climbing up the socioeconomic ladder. At the same time, the best way to reduce biases is by exposure to different groups and real meaningful engagement with them. But if most white people don't have any non-white friends, well, those biases are gonna entrench themselves even deeper. These processes that perpetuate racial inequality might have very little to do with this kind of upfront hatred of um, people that are unlike us. It can and often happen through processes that seem entirely mundane and totally socially acceptable. Calvin gave us a three-step experiment. The first part was about becoming aware of our biases by taking the implicit association test. While that test is not super reliable, it has about the reliability of blood pressure, so it does bounce around a lot. What we generally find on this test is that people tend to show implicit biases preferring uh, the majority group. Step two was to do a self audit of our friends on every single social network we're on, counting by hand the racial makeup of our friend groups. Go and look through your social media accounts, right? Who is it that you are uh, following or friends with. Three was the most important. Most of the research on implicit bias shows that it's actually really hard to change them. But the gold standard for changing implicit bias is exposure and meaningful engagement with people from different groups. Because it's a pandemic, we can't really meet new people, it's very hard. So what Calvin recommended is to change the media that we consume. Seeking out forms of media, both nonfiction and fiction, that uh, highlight experiences that are different from your own. Okay, it's time to take the IAT test, which is the implicit bias test that Dr. Lai told us to take. Okay. It indicates that most Americans have an automatic preference for white over black, okay? I am auditing my Facebook friends. Okay, so I'm about to do my audit of my friends list. This is not, 
This is not gonna be a fun process. I have a lot of white friends. Jeff is white. Jeff is white. Jeff is white. Other Jeff is white. We learned a lot from this experiment. During the IAT you just completed, your responses suggested a slight automatic preference for African Americans over European Americans. I have a moderate automatic preference for European Americans over African Americans. That's so weird and crazy to say out loud. The entire time I was taking this assessment test, I was just like, don't be racist, don't be racist, don't be racist. Now the question is, what can I do about it? Because that sucks. Over 70% of my contacts on all of the platforms are white. 71% of my friends are white. But this experiment wasn't just educational because of the results of the experiment. The process itself was educational. I feel like I've spent the last decades of my life being trained not to see color. And for this exercise, I have to very explicitly mark off every one of my friends and what color they are. What Brian is talking about here is something that I think most white Americans can relate to. The idea of colorblindness. We were raised not to see people's color, judge people by the contents of their character, not the color of their skin. It seems really obvious and like a good thing to do. But when there are real structural barriers in this country based on the color of your skin, we actually have to start seeing color. Hey, Dr. Lai, how's it going? Hey, Dr. Lai. Hi, uh, it's going great. How's it going for you all? When we checked back in with Calvin, he had a few more nuggets of wisdom for us. Like how sensitive our biases are to our physiological state. Uh, we find that, for example, people who don't have breakfast or are just generally more tired or exhausted tend to show more of these implicit biases. He reiterated the importance of the friend audit. Who are the particular people I'm interacting with? If you're not paying attention to that, you know, you can be kind of perpetuating inequality just by default. And the importance of consuming different media, even if you don't think you believe the common stereotypes that are out there. Crazy Rich Asians was, you know, I'm not a, a rom-com person, but it was a really fun movie. Of course, people can like abstractly understand the idea that like there are Asian men out there that are rich or sexy or powerful, but it's something different about being shown it in a really vivid way such that it, it can kind of become internalized, become more automatic and more spontaneous. Now, as Calvin made clear, everything that we did here is just a first step. When it comes to your personal journey in terms of anti-racism is that, you know, there, there is a time, you know, particularly in the beginning where your main job is to do the reading, right? It's to increase your awareness. The next big change is to think about how can I actually structure my life differently to make a concrete change, right? Not just a, a change in my heart and mind, but a change in the world around me. And I think that to me is, is the, the big lifelong challenge. And so we encourage you to take this experiment just like we did. Take the IAT test, do a friend audit, and diversify your media inputs and also the people you spend your time with. And when you're done, let us know the results. If you want, share the results of your IAT in the comments. It's really scary, but that type of public commitment is a way to actually push yourself to do even more if that's something that you care about. As Calvin said, the education is part one and then action is part two. This is a long and challenging road to real racial justice and equality, and we need as many people involved as we can get. We are admittedly just getting on this train, which a lot of people are gonna say, rightfully, what took you so long? But better late than never, at least that's what we think, and we hope you'll join us as well. I'm Dr. Calvin Lai, rally on. Rally on. Rally on.